Hi, so today I'm going to draw a shield design uh, and rough it up, add some texture and add some uh, kind of drips of stain and that kind of stuff. So I'll show you some uh, techniques for symmetry, which uh, are really useful in ArtRage. So we'll go to Tools, we'll go to Paint Symmetry and switch that one. And I believe the default is that it starts exactly as this with four segments. So if I now start to draw here, you can see exactly what it's doing, which is great if you want to draw this kind of design. Pretty good. You've got some control. I'm just going to clear that. If you click on this uh, symmetry control button, which is only there because we've got to show the symmetry control on, you can set the number of segments. But there's another thing you can do before we go to that. You can do rotational symmetry, and you'll see the arrows on the on the symmetry control button change. So now they're doing that. And again that might be useful. So if I just clear that we'll change the number of segments to two and we can't let's say that we wanted it to be horizontal symmetry so you can see here how this draws i want to change that to mirrored so now it's mirrored and you could if you have allow axis drag switched on you can actually i'm holding down shift and I can rotate this so you could have some something that's set to use the horizontal axis as a mirror but we'll keep this vertical and what we'll do we'll just draw the outline of a shield design this canvas is four inches square by 300 dpi so if we I'm just going to switch off this axis drag uh, enable so that I don't accidentally touch it so I mean that's a pretty easy way to draw a shield and make sure that you've got the symmetry that you want so I'm just going to continue sketching some more details of what I'm going to look for. If you've got the Midlands 5th edition you'll see that there are shield designs within that for the different towns which is basically what I'm, I'm creating here. So I'll probably do this as a, a quarter design. Obviously when you're running down the middle. We'll switch that off when we get to inking just so that we don't do anything odd. In fact we'll switch this off now because I can just add, if I want to add a design in, in one of the quarters I can. So we'll switch off the paint symmetry and you can see that we could we could have added rivets around in fact we'll add some rivets but we'll just indicate the positions of those roughly anyway let's face it shields probably weren't built this accurate we'll have some dents and dings on the side as well so we'll just draw a, a dragon or a serpent motif could 
be a dragon. Let's give it a wing. And a claw. There we go. I'll probably just reposition that so Go to my settings here and we'll draw around that. Go to transform, we we'll just reposition it, clear the selection. Okay, let's get some ink going. We're just going to drop the opacity on the sketch layer. So that it's out of the way, and we've got uh, the the normal 0 0.8, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.05 ink pens here. I'm going to outline this with the 0 0.8 as I normally would. Again, it doesn't matter if you're not perfectly on the lines. Then we'll switch to the point one and we'll add in. various bits of detail. Okay, so just going to add some rivets. The one benefit of having the paint symmetry on, if you're doing the rivets and you wanted them exactly opposite each other, is it would be very easy. And we'll just use the 0 0.5 to add in some. extra bits of detail. OK, I'm going to switch off the sketch layer underneath. And then I've created some other layers here, so I'm, I'm going straight in with some colour. What I'll do is I'll create separate layers for the colour. So this will be metal. This will be red. This will be black, and this will be white. I just like to keep things on separate layers, it just gives me far more control if I want to switch something on or off or alter the colours of a particular layer without affecting anything else. It's just a really good habit to get into, to try and keep your layers as separate as you can. If you're sort of working with everything on like an ink layer and a color layer, then it can get quite messy. Especially if you have a uh, if you're if you're freelancing and you're working for a client, clients come back later and say, "Could you just make this tweak?" Sometimes, if you haven't got everything on separate layers and you've got that control, making that change can be painful. If you've got a layer that's got like a, a build up of different colours and textures and everything is all merged together, flattened, then you, you know, if, if the tweak is, oh, can you just make this like a slightly darker brown? Oh, yeah, I don't need to go there. So we'll get some metal colouring down. I'm going to choose 
this is my colour, add it as my sample so I've got it if I need it. And I'm just going to roughly colour that in. we don't want. You can actually use Art Rage to paint with oil and a palette knife. I don't have that skill set so I don't. You could use the paint bucket tool and fill this area that I'm colouring in and, and tidying the edges up on. But if you've seen the previous cartography videos, you'll know that Art Rage does one thing very badly, which is it doesn't give you a lot of control over the anti alias edges and the paint bucket fill. It's, it's just messy. So I like to avoid it. I'm going to make this and this quarter red, this will be black, this will be white and this will be black. One thing I can do, if we choose the red colour that we want, make it a muted red. I'm on the red layer. And you'll see that if I just tidy up this edge, and this edge, I can bring the metal surround of the shield up, all the way up above the white. So what this does, it, it, it's actually as if the shield was built in its layers. So you've got the base and then you've got the shield, uh, the surround around it. And that's how I'm reflecting it in the layers. So I can come back to the red for here and I'll, I'll never go over the line. I will here because we don't have that, that bit of separation. But if I now make sure that my the black layer is beneath the metal surround and the red layer, so I'm just going to move the red layer up underneath the metal surround, you'll notice that if I choose the black, which it's not going to be solid black, it's going to be a grey black. It doesn't matter if I run over. Because the bounds of the other colours are there to stop it moving. You'll see that I've got some areas of the metal surround that I just need to tidy a little. And the white we want on top of the black. Again, it's not going to be perfectly white, it's going to be slightly off white. Zoom in a bit. We'll do a little bit of a cheat on this just to uh, demonstrate the frustration I have with this anti aliasing. So if I select the ink layer, click here, go back to my white layer, press delete, clear. You'll see it's horrible. So you have to do tidy ups in
different applications to resolve it. That's a pretty good shield. I'd carry that into battle. The, the next stages of this are where this thing really kind of comes to life for me. So the first thing I want to do is add some texture to it. I'm going to control and click the metal layer and the metal layer will have a bit of rust texture added to it. So, so I'm using my my brush that I like to use and I'm going to select a colour that's suggestive of a bit of rust so add that there and then just adding that over the top might come a little bit lighter in a couple of places maybe a bit darker in others then I'm going to take this texture layer and I'm going to drop it under the metal frame, switch off the selection. So this texture will not go over the metal frames texture. This is just a texture for the shield design. And just to control the edges of that, if I use the magic wand tool, switch the ink layer select that then invert it's just selecting the shield I'm going to switch to my texture 2 now and I'm just going to add some kind of darker and lighter accents to this Hello, Glyn from Monkey Blood Design here. This is the point in the video where I remind you to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, share and comment. Thank you. And what I'll do, I'll use a blend mode now. Let's find the right kind of blend mode to use. Probably something that's going to burn the colour in. A bit too dark, maybe. Too soft. Sometimes it's just a case of finding something that works to your liking. I'm going to use that and just drop that back a touch. Okay. I'm going to add another texture to the top. Select the whole shield again, invert it. And this texture will apply to to everything. So it's kind of an overall texture. shall call it so. And we're using a texture brush and this this is going to be dirt. Maybe few hues of something odd. And we'll see what colour dodging does. That's actually really nice. But we want we want to keep this dirt, so I'll stop playing. Okay. I'm going to add the 
two layers that I, I normally add, which is like a shadow and a highlight layer. So the shadow layer, we just roughly half the opacity, about 50%, and make it multiply. And the highlight layer, same opacity, roughly about 50%, and we'll set it to overlay. We'll just select the ink layer, hit the selection, invert it, and then jump back to the highlights. The only reason for doing that selection is it just keeps my edges neat. It saves me sort of straying off, especially with the highlight, which is white. So sometimes you don't even know you've strayed off until you go and overlay your graphic if it's a transparent background into something else and then you see this white bit you forgot. So I'm just going to use the uh, my watercolour brush, set this to white, and then I'm going to add again light is coming in this direction so it's catching these edges Let's not forget about slight accent on every rivet, just on that edge that would hit where it will receive the light. And then on the shadow, we move to black. because the metal surround is proud it will leave a shadow and again every rivet will cast a shadow can you see now that this is really starting to get a little bit of realism to it it looks believable it looks used okay so the next step is I've, I've got a layer set up here for dirt which is something that I normally apply as, as kind of drips off the rivets just gives that extra sense of, of realism so let's select dirty color and then just under here I'm gonna add a some streaks. I've, I've got another brush as well, another watercolour brush that is basically just um, water. Uh, there you go, just water. That's the standard Art Rage brush, so I'm going to add that to my toolbox. And what you can do with the just water brush is just use it to drag the colour back to this And it works well here because 
if you imagine the water dripping off this rivet and then streaking down the face of the design and you might also have areas here that you know water's collected through Just do a few more especially in that corner And then we go to the water and we just And you can see that it, it's those bits of detail that when you add them, they really make something stand out. So there's one more little trick. This shield will have been hit and clobbered. So we're going to create a layer that is, we'll just call it dings. And this will be I'm going to use a brush that's got like a, a tapered lead in an ink an ink pen so I think we'll go for this one we'll add that to the toolbox and using a white pen I'm just going to add Now you're probably going to be thinking, what the hell has he just done that for? Here's why. If you go to layer effects and we switch to emboss, we make this a sharp contour. Actually, let me just make this multiply. It needs to be multiplied down. But you can see here where it started to do the effect that I'm after but we have to be consistent with our light direction at the moment at the moment you can see that the light if this is a, a gouge in the shield the light is coming from from this direction which is wrong because the shadow on the rest of the design is from this direction and it's about creating that consistent believability so we'll switch back to here go to the we're increasing the opacity so it's more obvious and then we're going to play with the light you probably see it slightly better I think it's actually it's probably there no I think that's directly down so that's directly down and um, I think 50% is directly up so we want about 25% let's see how we're looking I think that's pretty good now with your white pen again you can make some some bigger gouges you'll see that the more width thickness you've got on the pen the deeper the 
garage looks. We can make a few tweaks to the the surface and the colours and things. We can actually add a texture into that, which is not a bad idea. So let's go to layer effects again, click the emboss, go to the surface and we'll load from a disk of texture. It's on another screen, but basically it's the Windows Explorer. So I've just got to find something that I think will work. Okay. This is a photo of no idea, but we can play about the scale, and you can see the the texture getting into those. And play about with the depth as well. the selection let's bring the dirt above the, the dings and we'll add some drip dirt inside a couple of these the water just to So there you have it, that's how you draw a shield.